Hey everyone, and welcome to Space Nerd Confessions. I'm Cynthia, and before I start talking about my main topic, I want to share some big and exciting news. First off, for those that have been following my journey thus so far, as of July 24th, 2020, which was last Friday, I got an acceptance for my transfer application into the United States Space Force. Woo! <laughs> So what this means is that in September, I will be transferring from the Air Force to the Space Force. Secondly, I was approved for my first home purchase. So I'm really excited about that. I used my VA loan um, and then going through this process, um, there's a lot that goes into buying a home, believe it or not. So I'm gonna actually create a video on a VA loan and a first home buy and kind of breaking it down by a step-by-step -step guide. All right, so now let's talk Space Force. So today I'm gonna to be talking about Space Force base locations and where those units will be established. Um, I'll also talk about the new organizational restructure of the Space Force, which has kind of been in the news lately. And then I'll talk about the future of the Guard and Reserve units of the Space Force. I know that base locations have a lot of way on what branch you're gonna choose or even more specifically, what job you're gonna choose. So I'm happy to share these um, future space locations for the Space Force. So as of right now, the majority of space units are located in the state of Colorado, more specifically uh, Schriever Air Force Base, Peter Air Peterson Air Force Base, uh, Cheyenne Mountain Air Force Station. They're all near Colorado Springs. And then we have Buckley Air Force Base, which is located in Denver, Colorado. California also is home to some of the Space Force units. Um, currently we have Vandenberg, which is in Central California. We have Beale Air Force Base in Northern California. And then lastly, we have Los Angeles Air Force Base. The Sunshine State of Florida has a couple of small units. Um, there's one at Patrick, which is right by Cocoa Beach, about an hour from Orlando. And there's also units at Eglin Air Force Base, which is near Destin, Florida. Some other space units are kind of scattered throughout the U.S. Um, for example, Hawaii, uh, also North Dakota, New Hampshire, and Massachusetts. Lastly, there are opportunities to support units for a short tour and that's in locations in Alaska and in Greenland. However, I did wanna note that you're not limited just for these uh, base locations as space. Um, there are plenty of other opportunities and units throughout the world and uh, throughout the United States, um, but it kinda just depends on your rank and the type of job. So if you are a captain or above, you may have more opportunities to go to different bases and then especially if you apply for any programs for a special duty position. All right, next I'm gonna be talking about the new Space Force organizational structure. So you may be asking yourself, why are we restructuring the Space Force and what does this mean? <laughs> so the reason why the Space Force wants this structure is that it will provide a flatter organization with fewer levels of management. So they're pretty much collapsing wings and groups into one level. The overall goal is to have a light and lean structure so that way the Space Force can focus on space operations, acquisitions, and training. So the plan is to organize the Space Force into three field commands. And under these field commands, they're gonna have deltas, garrisons, and squadrons. So on July 24th, um, three of the Air Force Space Wings were deactivated and replaced with Deltas and Garrisons. So Garrisons are responsible for providing support to Deltas that are assigned to their installation. However, Garrisons do not oversee Deltas. They are peer organizations. So it's kind of equivalent to an air, ba air base wing. Um, so if you look up Air Force Instruction or AFI 38 TAC 101, um, you can get a good comparison of what an airbase wing is compared to an operational wing. So the Space Force has recently activated two garrisons, the Peterson Schriever Garrison and the Buckley Garrison. And the Peterson Schriever has been assigned 22 locations and the Buckley Garrison has been assigned 14. So the newly activated garrisons are responsible for providing the space installation operations, providing infrastructure, 
and providing support to their assigned locations. And lastly, for the Space Force structure, um, as I mentioned earlier, there are three field commands. So you have the Space Training and Readiness Command, otherwise known as STAR Command. Um, and then we have the Space Operations Command and the Space Systems Command. So the STAR Delta Provisional, or one day the STAR Command, is obviously going to be in charge of that training and education of Space Force professionals. They will also be in charge of coordinating with uh, the basic training and recruiting piece, which will still be conducted through the Air Force. Next is the Space Operations Command, which is comprised of the eight newly activated Deltas. So Deltas will be operational units that are aligned with space warfighting functions. So in other words, they're tied to specific missions or operations. Lastly, the Space Force will have a Space Systems Command, and although there's not a lot of information on this command, they'll be in charge of developing, testing, acquisitions, and fielding of space systems. Alright, and for my last topic today, um, I'm going to be talking about the future of Guard and Reserve units in the Space Force. The Senate Armed Services Committee endorsed the creation of a reserve component for the Space Force in new legislation. So for the reserve component, the committee approved the Fiscal 2021 Defense Policy Bill in June of 2020. But more information was requested in order to justify having and guard units um, in the United States Space Force. Also in 2020, Lieutenant General Scott Rice, the director of the Air National Guard, did mention that they are currently working on a framework of reservists and guard and how they would coordinate with the Space Force and then that way they can propose it to the Defense Secretary, Mark Esper. So that may not be a lot of information for the guard and reserve aspect of the Space Force, but I did want to push that our senior leaders are pushing for your roles to continue in your careers. So as soon as I find any more information, I'll definitely forward it to you guys. So that's all I have for today. Please comment with any questions that you may have um, since your questions guide my videos. Also, don't forget to subscribe. And I also have links to my Facebook and Instagram below so you can get notified through those platforms. Thank you all for taking your time to watch my video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs>